We're just going to look quickly today at books that have kind of got me where I am today, books that are always on my bookshelf that I look back at. Um, some of them I refer back to quite regularly, some of them I kind of know 90% of what's in them and um, don't need to look at them so often. Um, they're all from a few years ago, the, the most recent one uh, was written in 2004, um, so obviously that's a while ago now. Um, but still great books, still got lots of good info, so let's jump into it. So the first two, Basic, mi Basic Mixing Techniques and Basic Live Sounds, both written by um, Paul White, who is the Sound on Sound Editor-in-Chief. Um, he's written quite a few books like this. Um, these two are really good, um, so this one's more a studio-based approach um, from like positioning speakers um, to advanced reverb techniques like um, uh, one of them here is about um, having a stereo reverb and then delaying the left channel or the right channel for that matter um, through a delay unit to make the reverb wider, um, which I know a lot of people are now doing with guitars, um, especially in the metal world, delay one side by like 30 milliseconds to make get a wider effect. Um, it's sort of like a double track. Um, so there's this book. Um, so it's based a lot more on outboard, outboard gear than in the box fixing, um, but again, the principles still apply. Amusingly, the floppy disk is mentioned in this, um, and it says the max capacity on a high, high density floppy disk is 1.44 megabytes, which is, uh, well, that's a load, that's a lot, a lot of memory back then, I guess. But uh, nowadays, I mean, terabytes got four terabyte drive for doing all my YouTube stuff. So uh, sadly, not quite up to date in that way, but still a great book, still a great read, and you can still get them online on Amazon, and I'll leave a link below for that. Um, it's a brother in Live Sound. Again, this came out in 2000, so it's a bit old in terms of um, like gear it uses and stuff, and talks about, um, for example, the playback stuff in here. Um, it talks about uh, DAT machines and it talks about, here we go, um, DCC, Philips's digital compact cassettes and CDRs are kind of like the newest thing in minidisc, um, and like the newest thing, whereas obviously now we use Ableton and um, to do playback um, and QLab and stuff to do playback rather than DAT, but still great books, um, goes through everything from like Basic, um, like system tuning, um, off-axis rejection of mics, um, spill, choosing the mic, right mic for the job, system tuning. Um, it's got a little soldering appendix right at the back, actually, which is pretty useful, um, which can kind of show you how normal cables are kind of made. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. Um, I'll leave a uh, link in the description to this one as well, but yeah, I thought that was quite amusing, the uh, floppy disk in the other one, and then the DAT to mini disk as playback rig options in this one. Um, obviously, times have changed quite a lot to Ableton and stuff now on QLab. Um, but I just thought I'd leave you uh, a little um, thing about that. So these are two books in the series. Um, there are other ones, obviously they're all kind of based around the same sort of time. So there's ones about home recording, sampling, MIDI, um, what else is there? Um, how to set up a studio, like studio design, um, but um, these are all like the small books, all like beginner entry level versions of the um, Sound on Sound Guide to Live Sound that they did, um, which I don't have a copy of, but I do have Live Sound Reinforcement. So this is the latest one that I've got, it came out in 2004, this uh, version, um, which has got a lot more information in than those little books down there. Um, for example, this page, it says at 160, uh, too much energy in the 100 to 250 range, so it might sound boomy, muddy, muffled, or too thick at 160 hertz. Um, for example, 6.3, it says too little energy in this 4K to 6K range, uh, lack of distinctive um, edge, or sometimes heard as lack of clarity or bite. And then you could also say like 6.3 to 8 is like where you get sibilance. So that's kind of where you aim to cut out sibilance. Um, but great little book. Well, not not as little, not a pocket size. Um, far more in depth than the other ones. Um, uh, it goes into crossovers and um, different ports you could use to make your own systems and stuff. 
not as in depth as some, but does go into quite a bit of uh, depth on stuff. Um, it's not the Yamaha one, but it's quite similar. I recommend both of them, and obviously the Sound on Sound one as well. I'll leave a link to the Yamaha one, the Sound on Sound one, and this one in the description. However, these are all older books, and you can get all these kind of information online now as PDFs. Um, but that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't say where I got my info from. So. So those are the books that are based on live sound. Now I'm going to have a look at the books based more on event management that I've got. Um, so I used to do loads of outdoor events um, up and down the country, ticketed and non-ticketed. Um, so kind of like free entry ones and then ones you have to obviously pay for and come into. And there's actually different rules depending on um, if it's ticketed or non-ticketed with the amount of toilets and stuff. So it's really good just to have a couple of books and crowd safety and stuff. So it's really good to just have a couple of books that... Um, tell you about that. So this one is the Event Safety Guide. Um, this is the 2002 version, um, the purple book. Uh, it's kind of like the Bible for outdoor events and event planning, um, fire safety, venue and site design, um, ratios for um, toilets are in here, barriers and um, crowd control. Um, what else are in here? Arena events get covered a little bit. Um, yeah, larger events, classical music events have their own section. Um, unfenced and unticketed events are kind of the ones that I was looking at more, like kind of ra radio road shows and like um, church fates that we were doing, but on a larger scale of church fate you've probably seen before. Uh, all night music events. Um, so it's got super useful info in here. Um, for example, the ratios on toilets are exciting. Um, so for an for a, um, event that's happening for more than six hours consecutively, it's like a festival. Um, you'd need one toilet per 100 females, or if you're men, you need one toilet per 500 men, and then um, one urinal per 150 men. Um, so obviously, um, if you're a man, you can't have a poo as often as you can if you're a woman. Fun stuff to know. Um, that's obviously for six or more hours of, of an open event that's ticketed. Um, different rules apply to other things. Um, this is all online now. Um, but you can, I'll leave a link to this in the description. Um, but this is, yeah, from 2002, and then they moved all this online just to make it easier for everyone to access it easy, um, quickly. Um, and obviously you can update the info much more quickly. And then I've got Managing Crowd Safely here, again from 2000, a bit outdated, but all, all the content's still great in here. Um, I also did SIA back in the day um, as a, Stay, oh, what's it called? A door supervisor, um, which um, allows you to um, work as a steward or security on many events and allowed me to uh, get a bit more in depth knowledge of, about um, managing crowds. And this is another HSE book, Government Run Initiative. These are both HSE, Health Safety Executive Board. Um, so it's kind of like a branch of the government where they tell you about how to manage an event safely and give you all the ratios that they advise and then you can run to that. Um, so that is um, good for planning and assessing risks related to punters coming into the events. Um, so these are two of the books that I use for event management and outdoor events. And then we've had a quick look at these three books, two more basic, one more studio, one more, set, more live and then full-on version of the uh, same kind of thing that I've uh, got. All this info is kind of online now, um, but it doesn't mean the books aren't useful. It's great to just reference them. Um, I still look at the massive CPC catalogue rather than go online and type in a terrible search bar. I'd rather look it up on the page, find the right product or the similar product, and then type it in and kind of go from there, which is kind of what I do with um, these books as well. Always have them there as a paper copy. So hope that's been helpful for you. And I will see you again in another video. Cheers, guys.